everybody, Jill here. Welcome to my channel. We are having a wig chat today and we're going to be taking a look at a Raquel Welch wig and it's definitely in that handful of wigs that I really adore. It's called Big Time. It's by Raquel Welch. I have it actually on my head now. This isn't the one that we're looking at. This is one that I have had for a while now, for a long time. I'm not sure exactly when. I'm going to put the date up here somewhere. I actually think I've washed it once and I think it needs it again. This is in Shade of Cappuccino, but the one that we're looking at today is going to be straight out of the box and it is in a color that is called SS Iced Cafe Latte. So you know how it goes. When a super popular color sells out, you have the option to see if it's in another color that you may be interested in and or just wait for it. Well, me being an impatient pers person, I have many times opted to try it in a different color. Well, you know, sometimes that's a good thing because it opens you up to other colors. So Shaded Cappuccino is one of my, absolutely adore this color and it's because I took a chance and decided to order a particular style at the time that was just not available in my Shaded Biscuit that I love so much. And I'm so glad that I did take that leap because Shaded Cappuccino is definitely an all time favorite. So it's nice to have another option, you know, for that brand that you love so much. Well then, that same thing happened and I didn't get those choices of Shaded Cappuccino or Shaded Biscuit in a certain style. So this one was presented to me as an option and I decided, okay, I'm gonna take a leap and I did and I absolutely adore this color too. But I have never actually held them up side by side together, Shady Cappuccino, with this color. So we're going to do that today and I think that'll be kind of fun. So I hope you stick with me. Again, we're going to take a look at Raquel Welch's Big Time in Iced Cafe Latte. I absolutely think if you haven't really looked into big time yet in the Raquel Welch line to take a gander and this hopefully is going to help you do that. So let's take a look at this cap first of all. Big time is really my absolute wish list come true when it comes to those cap features and after all the cap features is what's going to give you your experience be it good or somewhere in the middle and maybe or bad. All of those cap features is what makes up the style and brings you all that it does. So cap features are not to be overlooked. It's going to shape your experience with that wig. It has the full monofilament. Temple. It has the amazing temple to temple lace front that Raquel Welch does so well. So temple to temple lace front, full monofilament. If you don't know what monofilament is, that is the feature that really gives you a realistic part slash scalp look and experience in a style. Sometimes you will only get a little part of it, like a left side part with the monofilament in there. So at the very least, if you know where when you're parting it there, you're going to have a realistic scalp look. This has it all on the whole crown. So you have the luxury of really just parting this wherever you want. You can change it up. It's ideal for someone like me that really enjoys styling their wigs, making it look a little different every day, or at least, you know, each time I put it on by just changing it all up. And it gives you that luxury of being able to do that and still have this really nice scalp appearance. Now, not all brands do these features well. I'm not going to spout them out, but they don't. And you know, you may have a wig that has lace front, but it's not the greatest lace front. Then don't give me a lace front. You know, I rather not have one. Same with monofilament. I have seen it done really well. I've seen it done somewhere in the middle and I've seen it done really poorly where, okay, the price has escalated because it has this monofilament. Did I say lace front? I'm sorry if I did in the beginning. It has monofilament, but don't give it to me. Don't escalate the price if it's not done really well. You know, with Raquel Welch, you're paying for those features and you're getting them and you're getting them very well done. And that's nice. The rest of the cap here 
is machine wefted. That's going to give you some stretch. It's going to give you some ventilation. So actually a lot of people prefer to have the machine wefting over the 100% sort of hand tied caps. This is it's really practically a must for me to have this felt lined temple tabs here, these ear tabs. They are nice and soft. They really give more comfort than if they're not cut down on itching. They just really feel much nicer when they're felt lined like that. Sometimes I accidentally say velvet lined. I mean felt when I say that. And the other thing that I really prefer, I can live without this, but I prefer to have it. And that is when the nape is sort of extended like this and when it also is felt lined. Again, it's laying there against the nape of your neck and you feel it there. So if I'm going to feel it, it's always nice to have that felt line. Why do I like to have it extended? Again, it's something I can do without, but I do prefer, prefer it to be the extended nape because again it sort of just tucks in nicer and there are metal stays back here they're vertical and you can pinch them in and it just feels more secure i just like the feeling of having that back here the other thing even though i because of my head measurements i generally don't mess with these sort of pool tabs here and what these do this is velcro and it securely just lays here against this felt. I don't generally have to mess with that but what it does if you do have to is it either can go out to a half inch or you can bring it in up to a half inch on each side so that's why an average generally fits most of us because you do have the added benefit of letting some of that out or bringing it in. I like the Velcro better than those little bra strap kinds because again, I can feel them whether it's plastic or if it's made of the metal, you know, that little thing that it slides in and out of, I generally can feel that back there and it drives me nuts. Can't feel this at all. So I do prefer to have it to be the Velcro type of attachment. All right. So I am going to get this one on and let's switch them out. So. I'll be right back. All right, so this is right out of the box. I didn't even shake it, and normally I do shake the wig a little bit. I don't go crazy, but I'll shake it a little bit just to kind of right out of the bat, just free up the fibers. You know, they've been in that box. They're smushed there, no matter how well they're packed. So it's a good idea to just, you know, kind of take it by the nape and just do a little bit of a shake like that. Just kind of wakes them up and, and shakes them off the cap a little bit. You know, do everything you can to get that first on your head experience a better one because many of you, you underestimate, especially when you're new, you underestimate the shock of having a regular head of hair and you feel like it's wiggy right away and you don't get the best experience right out of the box with just about any style. It's very seldom I put a wig, it happens, but it's not as often you know than not where I put something on my head <clears throat> and I'm like holy cow I love this no I usually have to mess with it a little bit and um, and kind of make it feel more like me so just be prepared for that if you're one of those people that are just doing a little bit of your research and you're watching these kind of wig reviews I call them wig chats because I talk about things as you know usually there are first impressions so i'm just kind of taking you along with me you know as if you're not there and i'm looking in the mirror and i'm just like sizing it up <laughs> so i do have more chatty wig chats than i think the the regular kind you know i do like to take out a little tiny bit of my own hair here which is significantly cooler and, and lots of gray so if i were to wear this out i would definitely uh, first of all i'd probably straighten the little tiny bit that I do so it sort of blends in to the fibers. I would definitely wear some fill-in powder which is a root powder and just kind of you know put it on and over that bit of graying. Now when I wear shaded cappuccino I can get away with not doing that. This one has just a it's a little, little darker they're very similar but it's a little darker than uh, shaded cappuccino you know, there's a little more of like the low lights coming through the darker type, the darker color, you know, is a little more prominent in this, this one. Whereas this cappuccino here, 
we have more of the lighter highlights going in here and uh, especially around the face as you can see you know and then they kind of die down a little back in here but they're throughout just kind of gives this more of a lighter more ashier look however when I first saw shaded cappuccino I was a little bit like wow I thought this was going to be a little ashier it's it's a bit warmer than I anticipated but if you were to hold this up with to a true warm color it is still what I would consider a neutral I wouldn't call this a full-on cool but it's definitely neutral that leans more toward the cool end but anyway I can get away with um, kind of blending in my gray here a little more I have definitely an ashier brown going on since I've been graying and guys being a wig wearer I really prefer not to do anything with my own hair I don't like to color it I don't like to worry about it it's part of the fun and just the stress-free experience for me is you know I just don't like messing with my own hair <laughs> so I work with it by using like fill-in powders when I need to because only this bit you know, a very little bit is going to be exposed anyway, but just to give me more confidence and more of a, a greater experience with my wig, I do prefer to do some fill-in powder when I feel like I'm wearing a color that it would really kind of push that realism more to the forefront. This is out of the box and on my head, and you saw me kind of just pick, pick up the fibers, kind of run my fingers through it, and that's it. So before... Before we kind of dive a little deeper into this uh, beautiful style, gosh, so pretty. This is a comfortable cap. Again, you can always refer to my measurements down in the description area. I always try to remember to put them down there so you have something to gauge, you know, with what your measurements are. And I'll also, because I do forget to do this, but I will try to remember to also put the link to my favorite How to Measure Your Head for a Wig YouTube video. It's a John Renault. It's just very concise and it, it's boom, 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 you know. And I will put that down there so you know how to measure your head correctly if you have not done that and I highly recommend that you do to really eliminate whether you are a petite especially you know if you are a full-on petite regular size wigs um, are gonna not work for you they're gonna overwhelm you no matter what now don't be too disheartened because European brand averages really are more petite size so there are other options rather than just being disheartened and not being able to find your favorite styles in a petite because I know that's frustrating but you also need to rule out if you are really truly a large because you will have it depends how far up that large scale you are but generally you may still be able to make an average work by again letting out those tabs back here and there are even videos if that doesn't work you can actually cut the band um, I would definitely learn how to do that so you do it correctly so there are some ways that you can make an average fit you comfortably but it also will help you know if you're a large because you will not be able to fit in to certain brands at all even if they're if they're an average brand which is most of those European brands you will have to look past because their average is definitely not what we would consider an average okay so let me um, let me do a spin here so you can see what big time looks like all the way around <laughs> So we do have a very loose crisscross part, not super tight. So I always love when that's the case because they come out really easy. And again, we do have a full monofilament, so I can switch this up. Not gonna lie, sometimes it's stubborn. This is where it came. 
And this is where it's the happiest right now. But that doesn't mean that with a little bit of heat, a little bit of even sometimes just product will do the trick. You know, you if you don't want it part of there, you definitely have that luxury to coax it where you do want it. And there are ways to make that successful. So the lace front is absolutely gorgeous. It, there, here's, here's the temple tab for me. This is where it fits. And this lace front goes down to here that's about where it stops um, so you get this very realistic growth kind of right out of the side of your head there and that's lovely when it comes down like that because you know some lace fronts most a lot of lace fronts will stop right about here and it's just nice to have this extra little bit right along that area there when you but it is an added feature it is definitely a little cherry on the top when you have a, a temple to temple lace front. I love this color and shaded cappuccino for a choice to wear through fall and winter. You know, if you're kind of like that and you have fun sort of transitioning to maybe just richer, a little bit darker colors in the fall and then going full on blonde, very light in the summer, because that's what I do. In general, I most of my wigs are very light blonde and so it's nice to, to to sort of like change it up, but not drastically, you know? And that's what this color and Shady Cappuccino does. It, it sort of is this bridge, you know, and it, and it just sort of takes you out of those super light blondes and puts you in to more of this neutral, pretty blonde or brown category with, you know, these really pretty highlights. Still very dimensional. Because that's where I sort of tap out is when a color just loses that dimension. And I want to see some lowlights and highlights, even in my brunettes. So this winter, I do plan on trying some new sort of colors and going a little bit deeper into the brunettes. But my biggest, I think, I think the biggest issue for me, though, is I still want to see some dimension in the brunettes. So that's what my experiment's gonna be this winter. <laughs> and I'm gonna be sharing that with you guys. So here we have Shade of Cappuccino. Visually, I think, you know, you can see that Cappuccino here is got, I mean, it's very dimensional. We have a lot more of the lighter color going on through here in this color. Um, and so it just sort of gives a, a much sort of lighter, almost brighter sort of thing going on here yeah I definitely feel like you know we're, we're, we're seeing the same colors we're just seeing it distributed a little differently so let's just kind of try to move this over to the other side again you might fight with it a little bit And I think in this particular one, at least, I would be really successful with just utilizing some product to kind of keep it there all day to where it's not going to want to fall back the other way. Now, I can I just don't think I'm going to have that problem with this particular one. That kind of stuff can vary from unit to unit, from wig to wig. Um, so you just never know. And that's just part of being a wig wearer. Well, but look at this monofilament. Do you see that beautiful, realistic scalp part experience that you get with, with the monofilament? That, and that's, that's what you get. This style is kind of this really nice blend of a very traditional, sleek, professional look, but yet there's enough sort of fun, sort of shagginess going on where it takes that formal look and just gives you something nice and playful in the middle and i think that just sort of sums up why i like big time so much I 
I just want to take the fear away from those of you that are afraid to use styling products on your wigs. These are made for synthetic fibers. I just want to take that fear away. They come out when you wash it. They don't hurt your fibers. They don't shorten their life. So, so many of you are afraid to get in there and style your wigs. And I think that's so sad because, you know, just doing a little bit of this and that is going to make it feel more like you and you're going to feel, you know, just so much better in those wigs. So hairspray wise, I have many different ones. Uh, I have pump ones that are more wet and sticky. Uh, and sometimes you need that in, in certain types of fibers. You need to, to weigh them down. They might be just so fine and so foo-foo. Or the weather is very dry and you've got so many flyaways and the fibers just want to stick to the cap. Then you want to, you want those little bit, I know it sounds weird, but you don't want the fine aerosol, lighter hairsprays. It, it, it won't help you out as much as a a bit more of a pump you know one that's because unfortunately the pump hairsprays for wigs for synthetic fibers can tend to be a little wet and sticky it's trying to find that happy place with them and you'll just have to experiment but um this this particular wig i think would do well with aerosol just fine and for the longest time i could not find an aerosol for synthetic fibers so I opted to experiment just with human hair ones and it's not the best idea because they can be loaded with alcohols and um, you can find some that don't have alcohol in them but just make sure that they're water soluble otherwise they won't come out when you wash your wig so you just gotta be a little more careful you can definitely find them out there but it's so it just takes a little bit off you know off your mind when you're using an aerosol that is made for these fibers by wig manufacturers you know so this is currently one of my favorites this is by hair you wear and it's called control now what i'm running into which can happen with aerosol hairsprays is that this will get clogged it's it's starting to get to the point where it gets clogged and i have to run the the um the end here you know that it comes out of under warm hot water to unclog it so it's starting to do that it's a little annoying to me but they all tend to do that but this is neat because here you have the option of changing up how much product you want to have sprayed out so there's like low medium and high and it's it's really a, a really cool option but I do like this here's another one that I really love as well this is an aerosol it's actually called wig wax very good very nice I'm enjoying it as a matter of fact I'm almost out I do tend to go through this very quickly I wish it came in a size like this <laughs> uh, but this is nice again aerosol now I grabbed this because this is kind of a, a great option if you're not about hairspray we were talking this is what I was telling you about how I do prefer to use a, a dry shampoo just as a styling aid Whereas that's exactly what this is. This acts a bit like dry shampoo, but it's really more of a lift, a more of a styling aid uh, type of thing. And it's called Pick Me Up. And it is a dry shampoo. It is marketed as a dry shampoo. It's a John Renault product, which he makes some really great. That line has some really wonderful styling aids. Not fond of their hairspray, their pump hairspray. I'm not fond of that. But everything else I've tried, I have really loved. We've got, for instance, this is a spray gel. This is something I wanna experiment with. I wanna see if, for instance, I could just spray this on my hand, which is how I tended to use this. This is new, so I'm gonna spray a bit on in my hands, and I'm just gonna do this. And I'm hoping that this will aid me into calming those flyaways on my really troubled wigs. You know, like if I just use a little bit of spray gel, you know, can, will this help with the flyaways? So I, I'm, I'm gonna have to use this a few times to see if it, if it helps at all, rather than, you know, I mean, sometimes my hairsprays just aren't enough to help with the flyaways i'm going to throw one out there right now this can be a longer i think a longer uh wig chat than i normally do but um 
portrait mode, I've talked about how the flyaways of that one in my vlogs, um, it's just driving me nuts. It drives me nuts. Yet I love, love, love that wig. So I need to find something that's going to help with those types of styles. So I, I am on the search. I, I am on a quest. I'm going to search to high heaven to find something to help with the flyaways because what a shame. You know, I don't, I have taken that one off my head a couple times because I'm like, no, I cannot deal with this today. And then there's times when it's just like, but this is such a pretty one. I'll I'll deal with it. And boy, when I get home, it's off because it just drives me nuts. So I'm going to be experimenting with things like this. Also, uh, definitely have some of this on hand. This is Peace Out. This is uh, John Renault as well. This is a styling wax. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. I actually threw my old one away because you will it will it lasts literally forever and I was so afraid because mine is the old packaging I was so afraid that this new formula wasn't going to be like a wax because I prefer that over a cream and it is definitely like a wax look at that I mean I'm pressing pretty hard I love that it's my favorite styling wax that I have tried in any brand because I want it to be waxy you can overdo these so easily but if it's a wax it's a little harder to do that you can but it's a little harder and this is like a true wax so um you know will this since this is a heavier this is the heaviest styling aid than you're that you'll probably ever use so um you know will this help the flyaways but not weigh down my fibers if i use it sparingly gonna try it out i am determined anyway you got to be careful with waxes or creams it will turn your fibers into mush and make them look really dirty and gross if you go overboard with them and it can sneak up on you pretty soon you're like oh gosh i overdid it they come out super easy you don't have to worry about that you know this is made for these synthetic fibers but you know you don't want to have to wash it if you don't have to well i mean just using those two i don't know which one did most of the trick there <laughs> but i feel like it's helped with the flyaways uh anyway so i definitely have to go out with some um hairspray on and in my pieces because I just want it to know that I want you to be airy looking and not like a helmet. So I just like to kind of lift the fibers and um, encourage them to do what I want them to do, not, you know, what they want to do. Back to this number four. This is a dry shampoo, yes, but if you're not into hairsprays, you might want to explore this because it's going to give your styles some lift and, you know, give them and aerate them a little bit. And yes, it, it will also take out some shine. I noticed that the shine factor of this and, and cutting it down isn't as much as I can get from an actual dry shampoo. But this one really fits the bill for me a little more because I tend to get the kind of fibers that I'm not overwhelmed by the shine. So this fits me really well because it allows me to kind of use it as a styling aid without it getting powdery looking and, and all of that. But this here, I'm gonna actually use this. This is a, a really nice aerosol. Um, to be honest, I prefer to use this more as a finishing spray. Um, and I do lift the fibers a little bit. It's not, I don't think there is a hairspray made for synthetic fibers that is gonna give you super big hold. You know, so if that's what you're looking for and you're hoping for, I think you need to kind of set that aside a little. But this comes close, this comes close. It's not like it's gonna hold it there all day, but to be honest, in wigs, sometimes that gives you a helmety look in it of itself. You know, I do like my styles to kind of get, if it gets blown around, I can just do this. And you know, you want them to look and, and act realistic. And I've not been ever into just making my own hair back in the day look like a helmet, you know? Well, in the 80s. <laughs> but anyway, those uh, are, these are lovely aerosols for wigs. This is a wonderful styling option in general. 
get yourself some of this this is literally piecing the hair and putting it where you want it wonderful for really kind of more pixies or styles where you've got a lot of choppiness you can have fun with this i just am going to do a separate video on products and and, it, and just explore how they're used and the, and how i like to use them definitely get yourself a nice collection because it only takes a couple minutes it's not like you have to spend hours on doing any of this but if you want to wear wigs and you know you want it to feel like you you got to treat it like it's your own hair you know you just you just you don't have to go crazy but it's just nice to have these in you know your options so there you have it uh this is big time by raquel welch and this color here is called shaded iced cafe latte i think i got that right <laughs> thank you so much for hanging out with me and hanging in there till the very end this was a little bit longer and uh, i sure appreciate all of you out there i will see you very soon in my next video bye, -bye.